Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're going to try to find the impedance of the circuit right here. And notice that I've drawn some other forms of the same circuit because sometimes we don't always realize what the circuit looks like unless we draw, we redraw the circuit. So we have the input to the circuit, the output to the circuit. Notice we have this one capacitor across the two terminals, but then when we start from this branch and we look at all the other components in the circuit and we redraw this into this format, we begin to see that we have like a bridge circuit and then we're going to then do what we call a delta to y conversion. Notice right here, this is a delta and we're going to convert that to this y right here. Now, how do we do that? Well, we have to compute z1, z2, and z3. And Z1 can be calculated as follows. So Z1 will be equal to the product of those two components because after all, sometimes it makes it easier to draw the Y in here. So we're going to draw this. So here would be our Z1 over here. This would be our Z2. And then when these two, two come together over here, we're going to draw our Z3. So that's what our Y is going to look like relative to this delta right there which means that Z1, this component right here, is equal to the product of those two divided by the sum of all three. So in that case, the product would be J2 multiplied times A minus J. And we divide that by the sum, which would be J2 minus J plus 1. So when we multiply these two together, we get a minus 2 J squared. J squared is a minus 1. That gives us a positive 2 divided by, in the denominator, we get a 1 plus j. Now to go ahead and divide this into that, it's probably better to go ahead and convert that to the magnitude and phase angle format. So here we get 2 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, divided by here, we get 1 times 1, that would be the square root of 2, with a phase angle of 45 degrees, Okay, 2 divided by square root of 2, that's equal to the square root of 2, because if we multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 2, we get the 2 scan slot, so we end up with this, and we have a phase angle of minus 45 degrees. And then when we write that as a real and imaginary part, it'll give us 1 minus j. Okay, that gives us z1. Now we do the same thing for z2. z2, we have to multiply these two together, divide by the sum of the 3, so Z2 will be a minus J multiplied times a positive 1 divided by, we already have this, the square root of 2 with an angle of 45 degrees, which is equal to minus J divided by the square root of 2 with a phase angle of 45 degrees, which is, uh, let's see, 1 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees divided by the square root of 2 with a phase angle of 45 degrees, which is equal to 1 divided by square root of 2, which is 0 0.707, with a phase angle of minus 135 degrees, which is equal to, hmm, phase angle of 135 degrees, that'll give us a minus 1, or minus 0 0.5, because if, oop, that's kind of messy here, minus 0 0.5, and that would be minus j 0 0.5. So here we have the uh, real part and the imaginary part off of this because we have a, an angle of minus 135 degrees. All right, now for z3, z3 is between these two components, so we're going to multiply these two together and divide it by the sum of all three. So for z3, you end up with j2 multiplied times a positive 1 divided by the square root of 2 with a phase angle of 45 degrees. So J2, that gives us a magnitude of 2 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, divided by the square root of 2 with a phase angle of 45 degrees, which is equal to the square root of 2 with an angle of 45 degrees, which can be written as 1 plus J1. So now we've got Z1, we've got Z2, and we have Z3, and now we can go ahead and start adding everything together. So what we're going to do now is add this resistor to this impedance Z1, this inductance or, or reactive, this uh, inductive reactance with this Z2, and then we add those together in parallel, and then we go ahead and add it here in series with this one, and then we're going to take these two in parallel to get the total impedance. So at least we have a plan of attack, but it's now that we've converted the bridge circuit into a Y, 
or the delta component of the bridge circuit into a y component, we can now go ahead and use these results to solve the rest of the circuit. So that's part one. Stay tuned for part two, which is coming up.